which brings us to sort of this racial injustice that people are having a real hard time. Some people are having a real hard time wrapping their head around um, either what to do, how bad it is, um, and what what exactly can we do to, mm-hmm. to fix this problem, right? Um, whether it be, um, you know, uh, voting restrictions, uh, whether it be police, you know, brutality in the case of, uh, you know, George Floyd and, and so many others, um, and whether it just be like... Um, uh, this this uh, critical race theory that they're you know teaching in school and uh, right it's like we can't even agree on the history of things now and wh- where things are and and I know that part of you know your book it's like racial and gender justice must move forward together right, right. so and I and I love that um, and I'm just want to dive deeper into that sort of explain like what you mean by that and yeah let's just dive deeper into that one of the ways that that the predominant culture and let's face it and i want to just i want to say at the outset number one i think we all want to be good people yeah. and we all want to be seen as good people and we all want to think we are good people yeah. <laughs> you know we all we, <laughs> and we buy into the values the traditional values of uh, that america was ostensibly founded on we have to keep broadening our idea of who gets justice here who is who is who are who is liberty and justice for all uh, who gets that <laughs> who's liberty and who's justice are we talking about and yeah. we know that at the beginning of our country not everybody had that you know women didn't have it and black people didn't have it and indigenous people didn't have it and mexican americans didn't have it and so we we have needed to broaden that definition over the years and to our credit as a country there has been a great deal of broadening of what that, who gets the liberty and who gets the justice. And I, I, I truly believe that, that we have to move forward together for gender and racial justice, or we will continue to be splintered apart and never be able to actually make the change that needs to happen. It's hard for many people to get comfortable with the fact that we will soon be a country that is more brown and black than white. But if you think about it, it was brown long before you and I were here. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so uh, who are we, you know, who are we to think it's, it's a bad thing to, to have a more diverse country. It's, it's a, it's actually a good thing. I mean, in so many ways, diversity brings more richness to the culture. It brings better food. It brings, <laughs> I mean, it definitely brings better food, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. and, uh, <laughs> just to speak to your topic yes. and, and, and it, it brings more innovation and creativity to any yeah. organization organization to have more more perspectives around the table. So I I believe that real firmly. I mean, we've talked about this before, but I, you know, I've been at this for a long time and I and I actually learned from the civil rights movement that people working together can change anything, but it has to be people working together. Yes. You can't if you if you let if you let yourself get splintered apart, you you're not going to make any change at all it's it's going to continue just just as it is so that's what i mean by gender and racial justice have to go forward together or we're both going to lose we're all going to lose absolutely of course look uh you know when my, when my mother moved here from mexico she didn't speak any english she met my father he didn't speak any spanish uh, they were they were ma- they were married within three months oh my okay? goodness and they well, they could barely some language together <laughs> language love love uh, i'm telling you the language of love and just compassion and uh you know understanding like you can get a lot through mm-hmm. I, I find different cultures mixing and coming together the most beautiful thing that humanity can do is share with each other you right. know these things with with right. each other i mean that, that that to me is the whole point of the world Absolutely. In my opinion, you know, yeah. so yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. And, and it's not even that hard, um, you know, to be honest with you, um, you know, and to be frank, the more I've traveled around, America is actually very diverse. And I, yes. I don't think even people here realize how diverse we are. You go right. to other countries, you don't see a bunch of different cultures hanging out together. I'm not really. I mean, it depends where you go, I guess. Um, but mm-hmm. I have lived in different countries. And it's really predominantly that 
that culture and maybe a few right. different, you know, whatever, but you're like, damn, America really is. Holy wow. You know what? We do have a lot of uh, diversity uh, and back if home. It, if we use it as a, as an asset. Yeah, exactly. That, then it will be an asset for us. I, one of yes. the things I, I write about in the book is that diversity and divide come from the same root word. And if you see diversity as a plus, it's a plus. If you see it as a divide, it Correct. will divide you. And I think those people who are arguing about critical race theory are just, I think that is a backlash and it comes from fear, fear yeah. of losing power. And, it, and and while I understand it, I don't think it should be supported. I think we need to teach. We need to bring everybody into the story. Everybody's story is important. Everybody Correct. adds something to this soup that we have. And uh, I mean, this is one of the things I, I say in the book and, and one of my leadership intentioning tools, when I first, the first leadership intentioning tool is uncover yourself. And in your instance, you just did that. You, you talked about your, your mother and, and that may be a part of you that the world doesn't know unless you tell them because your name is Patrick Scott Armstrong, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, who would know? Who would know? That? And yet it's an important part of you. And if you aren't able to bring that part to the table, you're not able to be your full and authentic self. And great leaders know themselves. Great leaders show themselves. And so uncovering yourself, being, you know, knowing who you are and embracing all of it is just a super important part of being a good leader. And for myself, I, you know, I, I grew up as in one of the, sometimes the only, sometimes one of a very few Jewish families in little Texas towns. Well, let me tell you, you learn quickly that you're different. <laughs> you learn really quickly that you're different and you're seen very differently. Uh, you know, and you know, I, you, I could always just wait. I knew I was, the shoe was going to drop here in a minute because people would meet my grandparents who spoke with thick, Eastern European accents. And they were like, where are you from? And what did I, and what church do you go to? La, 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 la. So, you know, I had to deal with all of that. And, and when I was young, I hated it because I wanted like, I wanted to be like everybody else. Yeah. I went through that slow, phase too. It, it was a I, slow yeah. process of needing sure. to uncover myself and recognize that actually that little bit of difference in me is what set me apart. And it gave me something unique. It gave me empathy for people who were also put into minority, quote, status and othered. And uh, I'm sure it's what set me on a path to working for social justice my whole life and just understanding, wait a minute, you know what? The world is not altogether just here. And it's not your fault if, if you're viewed as being negative for being whoever you are. It's you know, we need to set that straight. We need to help people understand the the value of what each person has to bring. So I, the, I will tell you, this is the first book I have actually acknowledged all that in, and this is my fifth book. So, oh. I, and I've started talking about it in my speeches too, because it, it's the strategy, the, the reason Jews have become successful is because we are white for the most part, and we could sort of like meld in. And we could, if we would give up our culture, we could meld in. Well, that's not right. That's not fair. And I so I think it's, I think we need to encourage people to embrace who they are and embrace their cultures and embrace what, whatever yes. they look like, whatever they, you know, they sound like their language, their food, um, and just the cultural learnings that they have. And yes, it's good for us to have a common language, but like your parents, somehow human beings figure it out. That's my point. 